Hi, this is Laureen from Herbescent Tea and Botanicals. Thanks for tuning in for your demo training. I wanted to just welcome you to the marketing team and I'm very excited to get you started doing tea tastings in your area. So it'd be helpful to have your demo guidelines with you along with your demo materials to follow along with this video. To get started, when you first show up at your location, and most likely your location is going to be a, a supermarket. So the first thing you do, and, and I'm going to, most of the teas are in Whole Foods, so let's focus mainly on Whole Foods, and you're going to follow similar criteria um, as Whole Foods for all your supermarket stores. So the first thing you want to do is sign in if they require you to sign in, and Whole Foods does require you to sign in, and you get a little sticker to put on. Um, stating your name and what and what your, the purpose of your visit is for. And you're going to just put how many hours you're going, going to be there. And then after that, you're going to check the inventory in the store. Um, and first, you might want to find a location in the store where you're going to set up and use one of the carts in the, in the parking lot to bring all of your things in. And you may want to set it up and then look at the inventory. So whatever works for you and in, in, in what order that is comfortable for you. So when you check the inventory, you want to see what um, the inventory stock is as far as what you're going to demo for that day. You want to be sure there's enough stock of the teas that you're going to be tasting because hopefully you'll be selling quite a few tins or pouches during your demo. I would like to add a footnote to the setup. In each tin, you have a strainer like this that's included inside the compartment here in, 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 the, in the container here. So what you're going to do is place this in your cup that should also be included in your demo kit. And you're going to add a little teaspoon of tea in there just so customers can see how this strainer works and for demonstrative purpose, purposes. And then inside this compartment we have is where you're going to find another strainer that you can actually keep on the table because customers will come by and try to pick this up and spill the tea all over. So I like to have another one on the table for them to view and pick up and see. And people think it's really cool. They love to learn about it. So I would definitely include how this works when you're talking to people when you're at a store that serves and has and sells these uh, infuser tins. And in addition, if you're at a store that only has pouches, what you're going to do is, if they have tins, pouches, all these different types of packaging, you can certainly set it up like this and have a pouch in the back and a pouch in the front. But if they only have the pouches, strictly only carry the pouches, you can have your demonstration tin behind the cup or you might have a demonstration pouch that's open and you can keep that behind the cup and then have your pouches in front. And then you can get a large pouch from the shelf and have that in front of your cup. Now that you've checked the inventory in the store and chosen which teas you're going to demonstrate, I'm going to show you how to brew and set up your table. As you can see here, I have some teas set up. And as, just to give you an idea of how the table looks really nice and what I find to be very effective in sales. So you'll see that some stores have tins, some stores have pouches, some have both. So be mindful of that and make sure you have all the product on the table, even though you may not be doing that in your tasting. So if they have all 15 varieties of tea, you may want to have on the side of your table uh, those pouches or tins to sell, even though you do not have them here to taste. Um, because someone may not want an herbal tea and perhaps you're not um, tasting the green tea. So it would be good to have it there and have your sample tin to open and share with them so they can smell the tea. And you'll most likely sell some of that green tea even though you're not tasting it actively in your demo. So that's an important key element that I find is effective in having all the teas presented to so you can present them all. So for your five, you, have, you should have in your demo kit five or six thermal dispenser cups. And I, I would like you to make five or six, depending on how many of these you've received in your demo kit, to be sure to use them all during your demonstration. So this is set up for a store that has only tins. So you see here, I have three tins for each of the flavors. Now, Calming Spirit, I just ran out of some tins, so that's not demonstrated appropriately. However, if they had pouches, excuse me, I'm going to get a pouch here. You could have a pouch laying down along with your tin that you got in your demo kit. 
So if you look closely here, I have tins here that are mine. These are mine that I brought with me, per se, to the store. And you'll see the tag has got a, a it's, it's um, opened up here. I keep this here for convenience to be able to open these up to share with customers so they can smell while they're tasting, so they can view the tea. So I find this, again, very effective in the sales. So I like to keep that one here, standing up, so people can read the name in front of your thermal cups. And then I like to have some laying down because these tables we use tend to be low and this allows people to view the teas and read the names and see how lovely the packaging is and it's very attractive and draws them in during the demo when it's set up this way. So now I'm going to move into showing you how to brew the teas. I've, I've come up with a really simple, effective way to do this. Of course, for sanitary reasons, you, you must have your gloves. And here I have my hot water. Now, something we'll go into maybe in a, in, a, in a personal conversation before you start your demos, or we might get into it here in the video training is, you know, after you set up all of your teas, you can go to the coffee department in Whole Foods and have them fill this up with hot water for you. And then you can come and set up your table after you've found your spot. And while they're filling up your, your hot water jug, um, you can then, like I said, set up the table or start with this process that I'm going to show you now. So we're going to just take the lids off. And you can get spoons at Whole Foods. I should have included one in your kit. If you lose your spoon or need another spoon, they have them there. And you're going to get a package of tea sacks like this. And they're, they're fillable, disposable hemp tea bags. And you're going to fill them like so. And with a little practice, you can do this quite quickly. At first, I find people fumbling when they first begin doing this, but it's pretty simple. I just hold it at one end here, kind of cup it like this, and you're able to get your spoon in there very easily. So again, I have these in front of the cups for easy access. I just take one of my tins here, and I'm going to put two good heaping teaspoons in here and actually maybe three, just to be sure that you're going to get enough flavor here in each of these cups. So I put three teaspoons in, and you're going to fold this over like this. And you're going to be sure this is folded really well. You could even fold it a second time. But you want to make sure to leave room in this pouch, this tea bag, so the herbs, once they get wet, they're going to expand and open, and the flavors are going to come out. So you then place this in your thermal mug, and again, pressing, pressing that little flap down, because you don't want that to open up. Sometimes you'll find that it happens, and these might open up, and then you're going to dispense your water in, like so. And then you put that one back, and then close up the tin, and then you're going to do that for, for all the additional ones. So, you know, one more time here, you just fill this up like so teaspoon of your tea, or three teaspoons, sorry, whoop, and you're going to just do that with all the consecutive teas. Now, next we're going to talk about steeping times and tasting the teas so they're appropriate for serving. So I'd like to talk about serving and customer relations. So you'll have a number of cups. These might be the cups that you'll find in your demo kit. And you're just going to take one of these cups and pour your tea. And I like to twist the thermal cup slightly because it does have a tendency to drip. So you want to twist it so you don't make a big mess of your table. And I only fill it about three quarters of the way and allow them to grab these, the little demo cup on the top because the teas in the first half hour tend to be very, very hot. And I want to be sure, and be sure to let them know that the tea is hot, and be polite always. Um, and just, and then after you serve them their tea, it's nice to then elaborate into talking about the teas and the benefits and showing them the tea. But we will get into that into, in another segment. Now, for iced tea in the summer, I have a cup here for demonstration purposes. But you can go to the coffee department at Whole Foods or any of the supermarkets and get a large cup and have them fill it with crushed ice. 
or the coffee department often has cubes too, and that should small cubes, and that should work fine as well. Um, the produce department has crushed ice. The uh, fish departments have crushed ice if you prefer to use crushed ice. And you can simply just pour it from the cup into your demo cup, or you can use your handy dandy spoon and just scoop it out and put it in. So in the summertime, I like to ask customers, do you prefer your tea hot or cold or iced, or hot or iced? And they'll let you know. Some people do prefer hot tea in the summer. So um, just have the ice there for those that really don't want hot tea. Herbescent teas consist primarily of herbal supplement teas. I have approximately 15 varieties that you'll be demoing. So I wanted to just take a moment to talk the about the difference between herbal supplement teas and black tea and green tea. Herbal supplement teas comprise of herbs, which would be barks and seeds and roots, leaves, flowers. So we're talking about chamomile and chrysanthemum and cinnamon and fennel and those types of herbs, where tea Green tea and black tea come from the Camilla sinensis plant, and those are and, and the different processing of that Camilla sinensis plant from those leaves from that plant. They're processed in various ways, which make them into the different green teas and black teas that we see in the marketplace. And what makes mine different is that I have mainly herbal supplement teas that are complex herbal blends, um, which are very different from what you find in the marketplace. And they can be somewhat compared to, I, I guess, if there was something in the market um, that would compete with herbescent to a, a, a certain level, um, I guess you would say would be uh, yogi tea or traditional medicinals. However, those are very different because those come in tea bags. Herbescent teas are all loose leaf, which we've demonstrated earlier today on the video here, is that they're loose tea. So there's a great difference between loose tea and tea bags. So we're going to get into that a little more in the educational piece. However, I just wanted to state the difference between herbal supplement teas and green tea and, and, and black tea. So herbal supplement teas, depending on the herbal combination that is uh, formulated, they have a certain purpose. Um, and a lot of my teas have, have anywhere between 8 and 12 herbs in them. And with the green teas, you might have a few other ingredients like flowers or orange peel to make the you know, aesthetics of that tea look beautiful. But, but the green tea is going to be high in antioxidants, and we know a lot of the studies that are being said about green tea. So green tea contains caffeine. Most herbs, there's probably a handful of herbs out there that you might find that, has, that contains caffeine, which is very different than the caffeine you find in, in coffee as well as black and green tea. So m all of my herbal supplement teas are caffeine free but one. And that's important to know because I'll, I find at the tea tastings and demonstrations, people are looking for caffeine free options. So Brain Buzz has yerba mate in it. And again, despite the name Brain Buzz, um, it's, it's a fun name, but it's just got a little bit of caffeine. It's a very balanced blend, uh, but that one does contain some caffeine. So that's important to know if people want a caffeine-free variety that you may not want to serve them this and let them know there's yerba mate in there. Um, and all the other herbal supplement teas are caffeine-free, and they don't come from the Camilla sinensis plant. And the reason why they're all called tea, really herbal supplement teas, We've kind of coined that term here in the U.S., but herbal teas are herbal tea, or tisanes, or herbal infusions is really the proper way to, to, to speak about them. But that's just a little footnote for you. Um, when you're doing the tea tastings, you can certainly call them herbal teas, um, caffeine-free again. So that's really the difference, you know, and, and I guess I should touch on black tea. I have a couple of green teas, and I do have a couple of black teas. You're not going to find the black teas packaged in the grocery stores at this time, but you may in the future. And I do have a couple of green teas. So it's good to know the difference with the herbal teas we're going to get into. They do steep longer. We talked about that already. The green teas are going to steep a little less. So I just wanted to share with you the difference between the herbal supplement teas, green teas, and black teas. And I hope that helps you in your demonstration. I'd now like to share with you some of the key selling points that I find are effective in selling herbescent teas in your tea tastings that I think would, you would find very helpful. So the first is each of my teas is prepared with a healing purpose in mind. 
So I have teas for emotional balance, uplifting, calming, purification, and so on. And it's good to express that to certain customers who really want to learn. And, and, and also I want to say too, educating customers about this, it's, it's new for a lot of people, the loose leaf tea. So don't be afraid to really uh, learn a little bit about these teas because people do love to get educated. And while they're sipping on the tea, you can then open the tin, have them smell the tea, uh, while you're explaining about each of the aspects of the tea that they might be drinking. And so uh, th these key selling points will hopefully help you, help you with that. And again, we talked about these are mainly herbal supplement teas. However, you might have a green tea on occasion on your table. I use certified organic ingredients. And that's something you may want to mention. There's just little key elements while people are sipping to engage them. This is very, very important engaging the customer while they're at the table. So while they're sipping the tea, like I said, be sure to open the tea if they're drinking Dream Spirit and then say Dream Spirit is, is a, a tea for um, sleep support and relaxation and have them smell it and have this whole sensory visual experience with um, their tea tasting is very important. So again, certified organic. Um, you'll see on the tins, made with organic botanicals. On some of them it says, uh, it will say that, meaning that if you see here, made with organic botanicals, and this one here says organic on the dream spirit here. So on the purified body, mind, and spirit tea, there was one ingredient I couldn't get organic, and I get it wild crafted. So I wasn't allowed to use the organic certification on the label on the front, but you'll see on the side, all certified organic herbs except for one ingredient perhaps, you know. So, so that's, you'll see that um, on a couple of tins, but most of them are all 100% organic. And also, something very different than I do than what other companies might do is I use organic flavors. I don't use synthetic flavors, and I'll use essential oils for flavoring as well in some of the teas. And that's just to enhance the herbs that are already there. It's, it's really beautiful, the combination with just a touch of, of orange or a touch of cinnamon or vanilla. And with the natural flavors you'll find out there, it's a little FYI you might want to share with customers. Natural flavors, they come from natural sources sometimes, and most of the time I would say. Um, like cinnamon, they might extract the cinnamon from the cinnamon bar, but they're using a synthetic carrier, which is can be a petroleum byproduct. So I do not use natural flavors, and that's a big distinction between Herbescent and other herbal supplement tea companies. And these formulations are complex herbal blends. We talked about that. And, and another thing, they taste amazing. So I hope you find that they taste really amazing to you uh, when you compare them to other teas, herbal supplement teas with lots of natural flavors. So you'll see these are really full bodied and they might need to steep a slightly longer to get a little sweetness or more of the aromas from the tea. But, but you'll see that in your experience when you brew and start trying the teas. So loose leaf teas and botanicals contain increased amounts of essential oils for healing and support, flavor and aroma. Tea bagged brands go through more processing causing the tea and herbs to lose precious oils thus making them inferior to irrescent tea blends. So that's really important to note as well. This is the, 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 the primary reason I am different than, than other brands is the loose leaf quality of tea provides more healing essential oils, more flavor, more aroma. So that's really important. Another key point that I think is one of the most key uh, points to express to customers when they're tasting the tea. That look, this is loose leaf tea. How, how, how often do you have a chance to look at your beautiful loose leaf tea when you're drinking your tea? You, here you're seeing exactly what you're getting. You're getting the whole leaf, lots of rich essential oils in here. So things like that, it captures people. And they realize, you know, they're going to pay for something that they, they know they're getting benefits from. So one cup of this is going to have more healing attributes than one cup of a tea bagged brand. And of course, quality is our mantra. Uh, I use high quality herbs. And if people ask where do the teas or herbs come from, often they're educated to ask where does the tea come from. And that stemmed more from green tea and black tea. 
the regions of where they come from is indicative of, of their flavors or quality. With, with herbs, it's a little different. I get as many herbs organically in the U.S. as possible. However, that's, it's impossible to get all the herbs that I need. So they do come from all over the world from certified organic sources. They are um, scrutinized through uh, systems to be sure there's no uh, pesticide residue or just, just to be sure that they're as pure as possible. So that's very important to me. And that's also something you can taste in the flavor and the efficacy that comes through in these powerful blends is the quality of the herbs that I use. And like I said, you'll be able to see them when you get the teas, how beautiful the teas are. So the value of these teas, it may seem at this point shooting this video, the teas in Whole Foods, the tins are $11.99. Soon I'll be creating a new tin. And this has a little window on the back and will not have a strainer um, like we spoke about before. So the strainer was included in the top portion of the tins. So soon um, the tins are going to come without the strainer. And if so, of course, you're not going to be doing the demonstration with the teacup and the strainer at that time. But for now, you most likely will. But later on, these tins are going to come like this, and they're going to be about $9.99 a tin. So the price is coming down. So what's important for you to know, what the point I'm trying to get across here, is that cup for cup, these loose leaf teas are less money per cup than any tea bag you can buy. And I like to compare them when I'm in Whole Foods. I don't usually like to say the brands, but other herbal supplement teas, they have 16 bags in their box. These tins will make teas 40, 50, 60 cups. So when you do the math, with, you know, at $9.99, it's so much cheaper than tea bags. So you're getting more for your money. You can brew a second cup, um, unlike tea bags, brew a second cup by putting a pinch of fresh of these herbs into the used herbs and make a whole nother beautiful cup without sacrificing aroma and taste and quality. So again, very different than a tea bag. So these, again, are great points to bring up to customers when you feel appropriate. You don't have to bombard them with all these details. However, you'll have these things to pull out of your pocket when talking with the customers and what to share. Um, and I find these so helpful to get, engage the customer and then find that they're making a final purchase. And they may even buy two or three. I find that a lot once they learn a little bit and realize the quality and the flavors are just amazing. So. Again, the, uh, the amount of tea you get, you're, you're paying a little more up front for your tea. So, you know, $9.99, most people see the value right off. Some people may not, and if you see them kind of thinking and wondering about it, I say, well, it makes 40 cups and it's less money cup per cup than a 16 bags in a box. So this equals about three boxes of tea or boxed brand. Now, another thing I'd like to mention is that, you know, when I do the tea tastings, I don't boast about myself, but you certainly can. Uh, you know, people are really delighted when they find out I am the owner of the company. So something you can mention is that this is a woman-owned company, uh, strong values. I have strong values for herbalism. I've been an advocate for herbs since 1992. So this is not something I just jumped on the bandwagon with. This is a, a, a deep passion of mine. I had an herb shop for 14 years. So I've been cultivating these blends for a very long time and sharing them with people and getting lots of feedback. So once I no longer had the shop, I really wanted to bring my teas to the marketplace uh, to share them with, with the public because I've, they've been so efficacious in, in my life. So I hope you can present what I'm about and what Herbescence about in the best way that you can with enthusiasm and excitement um, and, and, and just enjoyment for Herbescent teas. Table all set up and the tea's brewed, it's time to engage and encourage the customers to come to your table. People love demos. Sometimes they're a little shy to come to the table, so a little encouragement. Not pushing this, but a little encouragement with enthusiasm and a smile is always wonderful, and people love to see what we've got at the table because it's so different and it's a really fun demo to do. And so I will encourage people by asking them and reaching out sometimes 
uh, asking if they would like to come to the table to try some herbal teas, organic herbal teas or herbal teas. I don't just say teas, I say herbal teas or organic teas. Uh, that seems to entice them a little more with my experience. And people are busy when they're shopping in the stores. They're so very busy, so I like to really engage them and be quick, and, and I like to read my customer. If you find that they're really busy but they want to try, um, you know, go through the teas very quickly. And as soon as you get familiar with the names and what to say, I think it'll roll off your tongue really easily. To start, I'm sure it's going to take a little time, and that's understandable. But I don't. I have five or six, as you will, on the table. And when I go through, when people come to the table, I say I have five or six teas here. I have an emotional balance, a deeply relaxing, a purify, a brain tonic, calming, and immune tea. So now it's very different than saying, well, here I have equilibrium, dream spirit, purified body, mind, and spirit, brain buzz, you know, calming spirit. That's very long, too long for, for people shopping into the grocery store. So sum up what each of the teas do. I do like the name to be brought up because that helps with brand recognition, etc. However, for, for demo purposes, to get people engaged and started with their tea, I like to state very briefly what each of them do. And in your demo notes and guidelines, I, I've highlighted and underlined those brief things you can state. You know, brain buzz is a, a brain tonic, purify, a detox tea for the purify body, mind, and spirit, and so on. So I think you have the point there. Um, uh, I think that's really important to just slide through them very quickly. And, and then when they're trying their tea, uh, talking about the tea, as we've said before, engaging them as much as possible with a smile, and, and, and encouraging them to continue trying more. Oh, we, oh, you're, I'm here doing a demo. This is very exciting. I'm not here a lot. Maybe you want to try the Purify tea, and uh, maybe you want to try the Brain Buzz tea. They're so good while you're here, you know, try some more. Um, and they usually like to. And, and if you're reusing your cup, I, I'm very environmentally conscious, so I like to reuse people's cups. And so, but when you do this, do not touch the cup to their cup. This is important for sanitary reasons. So be sure to pour and not touch their cup if you're reusing and they want to try all the teas. Um, so in addition to that, while people are looking or if they've purchased this tea and you've closed a sale and they've bought some tea, great, wonderful, ask them if they'd like a brochure. And be sure you have enough. Let me know. Stay in communication with me, letting me know if you have enough brochures or if you're running low. I may send them to you flat like this, and you will need to fold them like so and... Uh, because I may not have time to fold them. I don't have a machine that folds them. So, And another footnote is I have a mailing list. I'll, I'll include this in your demo kit, this mailing list. And you can have it somehow on the table. I know the tables get, get a bit um, um, tight. So, uh, it, but if, if it you know, fits, you can encourage people to sign the mailing list. The mailing list is for the newsletter. And this just helps with promotion of herbescent teas. So that's a very important element as well. And I appreciate your enthusiasm, your time in, in promoting herbescent teas. Here are a few videos now for you to enjoy with detailed description about each of herbescent teas. I'm gonna talk about Brain Buzz. This is one of my best sellers. It's got a wonderful flavor that people seem to love. It's got a, a sweet, minty, um, reminiscent of a little licorice flavor in there. And this I put together to nourish the brain and adrenals. And for those transitioning from coffee to tea, this is the perfect blend for you. There's a little yerba mate in here to give you that little zip you might need from, from the little caffeine that's in yerba mate. And there's eight other various herbs in here like ginseng and go to cola to support the brain and adrenals. So I encourage you to give it a try. Enjoy. Here we have female moon spirit tea formulated for all phases of female reproductive health. You may find this tea very soothing for menopause, PMS, and menstrual discomfort. It has a wonderful flavor I think you'll enjoy with mint and there's a little sweetness and a very soothing supportive blend. Enjoy. Okay. 
I'd like to speak about my spiced mango green tea. This is a, a green tea that's a little stronger in flavor and character than, say, a Sencha green tea. It's got more of a robust flavor and a little more caffeine. This is likened to a chai tea due to the various herbs I've got included in here with the green tea. We've got cardamom, cinnamon, clove, a little ginger. And I hope you get a chance to try this beautiful cup. And the, uh, there's a little hint of mango aroma in this. It doesn't overpower the tea. It's just a light essence of mango. And I hope you have a chance to try it. Hi, I'm Laureen from Herbescent Tea and Botanicals. I'm the founder and formulator of Herbescent Teas. And it's summertime, and it's my favorite time to make sun tea. So I'd like to demonstrate that for you today. First, you'll need a gallon jar or any glass jar. I'm using a gallon jug today. You'll need your favorite loose leaf tea. I have my organic honeybush nectar here. And then we need something to put the tea in to make it easy and convenient to brew. And I'm using these 62 millimeter mesh balls. There's many sizes that you can get these. These are available in many sizes. So I, I like to use this one because it only requires two for a gallon jug. And you're just gonna fill it like so. And this is a honeybush and broibos blend with calendula, rose hips, rose petals, hawthorn berries, and lavender. It's a nice relaxing blend for the summer. It's caffeine free. And the rooibos and honeybush come from South Africa. And this is a red tea. So it imparts a beautiful red color in your sun tea jar. So then you insert this into your jar and then you're ready to add your purified water. And another simple way to do your loose leaf brew for sun tea would be these refillable or fillable tea bags. They're hemp bags, and you're going to fill these about three quarters of the way. And the reason we do this is to allow enough room for the herbs and the tea to expand to impart their flavors and their healing benefits. And then you fold the flap over, and the water should seal that. And then you're going to put about six of these, maybe a couple more, depending on the type of tea you're brewing and how strong you like it and how strong the sun is as well. So, but, but be creative. And this is a good starting point and a good guideline to start with. And so now I'm going to take my jar and fill it with purified water and bring it out into the Arizona sun. I filled my jar with purified water and it's sitting in the Arizona sun. And I'm going to leave it here for about three hours because it's going to be about 100 degrees here in Arizona today. So it will brew more quickly here than in other regions. So be mindful of that when you're making your sun tea. You may need it to sit out for about, you know, four to five hours in direct sunlight. So I will come and check this in about three hours and happy sun tea. The sun tea now is completed steeping in the sun. I've brought it in and I've allowed it to steep out in the sun for about four hours. And it's an herbal tea, so you can allow it to steep a little longer to get a more robust flavor. So let's try it. It's a beautiful deep red color, it's gorgeous. Delicious. So be creative with your loose leaf tea. This is just yet another simple way, a convenient way to brew your loose leaf teas and to enjoy them. Thank you very much for joining me today and happy tea time. Team leader know in the department that you're gonna be leaving your table for a minute or two and that you'll be right back because their unattended tables are typically unacceptable in the stores. However, a short bathroom break is usually acceptable. And I just wanna thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you've learned and obtained information that you find is useful to, in these videos. And I, I just wanna let you know I really appreciate you and all the work and efforts you put out to promoting herbescent teas. And again, thank you so much.